Greetings and welcome to ValorTube.com. My name is Paul Lear. I'm an original content provider with ValorTube.com. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to This Week in Prophecy. And so I'm sure it's pretty obvious what I'm going to talk about here. I'm going to talk about aliens. And frankly, this is a topic I would prefer not to discuss and just move on about my merry way for a whole variety of reasons. Um, mostly because of Jesus's comments um, when he makes comments towards the end days and he makes mention to as in the times of Noah. Well, um, this is why I don't want anything to do with it because one can make a very strong argument from looking at the text. This was going on before the flood as in the days of Noah. So, um, you know, aliens, some would say fallen angels. Um, and a lot of people will say, well, does this, the fact if they, if we find aliens, does this affect what we believe as far as, is there a God? Did God make aliens? Uh, or did aliens make God? I mean, it just opens a door to all kinds of questions. But I'm going to go to the Bible as a source, and we're going to take a look at Colossians 1. Verse 15, the Son, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Uh, For in Him, in Jesus, all things were created. All of them. Uh, (laughs) How convenient. (laughs) I'm not breaking. I'm going to keep going the firstborn over all creation for in him, all things were created, all of them, things in heaven and in on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And that's Jesus. He's the him. He is before all things, And in him, all things hold together. And he's the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in all things he may have preeminence. So aliens, that means Jesus is over you too, or fallen angels, or whatever things out there that are seen or unseen, visible or invisible, all things in heaven, all things are in earth. You will submit to the Son. All things were created through him and for him. It says what it says. And that would include angels, demons, fallen angels, or even what the world may call aliens. And so I'm sure by now several of you have thought, okay, this guy has lost his marbles and he is off his rocker. But I would ask you to stick with what the text says. Uh, We're going to go back to Genesis uh, verse Genesis 6, verse 4, in those days, uh, the Nephilim were on the earth. And also afterward, when the sons of God came, the sons of God, Benai Elohim, some think those are angels, came into the daughters of a man, or of man, humanity, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. And just straightforward, Nephilim, properly. They're giants. That's what it means in the Hebrew. Um, and I'm not the only one who thinks this. There are plenty of other folks who, who believe in this. And I'll go to, to Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham's Answers in Genesis, and just the concept of, bi- of giants in the Bible. Um, he's got an article, Bible Characters, Giants in the Bible, for those of you who want to look this up. And there are plenty of Old Testament giants. We're just going to go through this article, hit the highlights, and show you. It's in the text. Um, Genesis 14 does not reveal that the Rephaim, these are all classes of giants, Rephaim, Zuzim, Amim, Amorites were giants. But you can find it in the Bible, the Amorites. Um, Genesis 10, verses 15 through 16. And then he goes on to present... um, I'm sorry, scratch that. He goes on to present where it states they were like giants. 
the Amorites, that's Amos 2, verses 9 through 10. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of cedars. And he was as strong as the oaks, yet I destroyed his fruit and his roots beneath. Okay, again, giants. Uh, The Amim. Uh, Well, first let's back up. Amorites, giants, is supported by the report of spies whom Moses sent through the land of Canaan. Numbers 13 through 29 and claim that all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Uh, the Amim, Deuteronomy 2, reveals the Amim, which likely means terrors were giants. The Amim had dwelt there in times past, a people as great and numerous and as tall as the Anakim. They were also regarded as giants. Rephaim, Anakim, Amim, the Zuzim, noted in Deuteronomy 2, verses 20 through 21. Um, a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim, but the Lord just des- Lord destroyed them before them, and they were dispossessed and dispossessed them and dwelt in their place. The Rephaim, uh, Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. The Rephaim, indeed, his bedstead was an iron bedstead, uh, nine cubits. So four cubits wide, so nine cubits, like a foot and a half. So we're talking, what, 13 feet or so. Um, the Nephilim, the verse is quoted in Genesis 6, verse 4. I mean, so there's an idea. The Bible frequently talks about giants. Again, the Anakim. Scripture references provided. You can look these up on your own. That's not going to be the point of this to some degree, uh, but just to prove that it's not a a fringe idea, it's noted frequently in the text. The Bible covers it. Goliath was a giant. He had four brothers. Um, And then there are other giants. The Philistines, I think the point's been proven. They're giants uh, noted in the Bible. So, which takes us to a story that was just kind of buried. And these stories, that's the thing, these stories have been buried in our pop culture. A lot of times uh, when we get any kind of release of information um, to the press from the government, it's usually done on Friday after five o'clock on the weekend. Everybody's out going on about their business and this stuff gets leaked out. Well, this got leaked out over the holidays. NASA used religious experts to predict how humans may react to aliens. And and so my point is this, you know, a a soft disclosure, as some would say, um, I think is beginning. And I think we're going to have to deal with this the more time goes on. And I just wanted to take the time here at the onset of the year and point out this is what's going on in our culture. Our government is releasing information about aliens uh, State Department or the, the Department of Defense, the Pentagon's releasing stuff about aliens slowly but surely on Fridays. And so we got this, and this is from the Hill. It's not like this is a fringe um, news organization. Uh, it's mainstream. NASA used religious experts to predict how humans may react to aliens. Two dozen theologians were recruited by a NASA-funded program to assess societal implications for the agency's astrobiological and search for life efforts. Okay, so religious experts, these are the highlights of the story, have examined how each of the world's major religions may respond to news that intelligent life exists on other planets, uh... Doc, the Reverend Dr. Andrew Davidson focused on the connection between astrobiology and Christian theology and the prospect of there having been many incarnations of Jesus Christ. Okay, why do we care about Jesus if we're that concerned? If this is about aliens, why do we first go to Jesus right out of the chute? I find that fascinating. And I think that goes back to the Colossians 1 verse. He created it. All things are created by him and through him. So we're going to take we're going to take a shot at that right right up front. Um, and he's writing a book. Um, 
He's from the University of Cambridge. Uh, he was among 23 other theologians in a NASA-sponsored program at the Center for Theological Inquiry at Princeton from 2016 to 2017. So this was done four or five years ago, we find out now. Um, wanted to see serious scholarship being published in books and journals, a profound wonder and mystery and implication of finding microbial life on other planets. Well, it's more than that. Um, but again, here they go with Jesus. I mean, if we're looking for aliens, alien life, why are you so concerned about Jesus? The most significant question there is probably whether one would respond theologically to the prospect of life elsewhere in terms of there having been many incarnations or only the one theologians talk about in Jesus. I have also been thinking about the doctrine of creation, especially in terms of how it deals with themes of multiplicity and diversity. Well, you know, you're a theologian, and I would direct you right back here to Colossians 1. The Son, the firstborn over all creation. Okay, no question for me there. For in Him all things were created. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through Him and for Him. These are not questions. This is pretty pretty straightforward. I don't. I think that question has been answered. Um, detection, quote, of alien life might come in a decade or only in future centuries, or perhaps never at all, but if or where it does, it will be useful to have thought through the implications in advance. Well, refer to your Bible is what I would encourage you to do. And then that's where faith hits the road. That's where the rubber's going to hit the road on this issue. Does one believe what the text says? Is Jesus the Son, the image of the invisible God? Yes or no? Straight up. Is he the firstborn over all creation? Yes or no? For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things, all things were created through him and for him. Yes or no? It's either true or it's not. And you're going to need to make a stand because this stuff is coming. And Jesus himself said it was coming, as in the days of Noah. And I think that's pretty well established. If you look at the world, pre-flood, Genesis 6, where a lot of this stuff had its uh, beginnings, it was there too. And truth may be stranger than fiction, is all you can say about that. Um, so it's coming. It's not going away. Uh, this is from the guardian. I just, I, I cherry picked the article. Pope Francis has weighed in on this. Uh, Pope said he would baptize a Martian, but would they want our religions? Uh, Pope Francis has speculated as to what would happen if an expedition of aliens wanted to convert to Christianity, but they're probably closer to God than we are anyway. Well, this was written back in 2014. Uh, and again, look at, look at the questions being asked. Do aliens believe in God? I'm sure they do. They were created by him. Did aliens create God? Nope. No, they didn't. Jesus created him. Did God create aliens? Yes. Through the sun that was covered in Colossians one. Is God in fact an alien? Nope. Nope. We are humanity made in God's image. Uh, Religion and extraterrestrial beliefs don't tend to go together. Nope, I disagree with that statement too. I mean, we've we've demonstrated that this stuff is accounted for in the biblical text. But Francis is out there. Yep, if an expedition of Martians arrives and some of them come to us, and if one of them says, me, I want to be baptized, he thought he would do it. So Francis is on board with baptizing aliens in the name of Christ. So I think they would scream and run. Just the mention of the word Jesus. Uh, Jesus is their daddy. He, he made it. Um, made them. Uh, they even draw some stuff. This is this is an interesting paragraph. As for Judaism and Christianity, conspiracy theorists, see if you believe this stuff, you're already labeled a conspiracy theorist. 
are fond of the Jacob's Ladder episode in the book of Genesis. Uh, Jacob dreams of climbing a ladder into heaven and meeting God, who tells him to spread his seed about the earth. I, that's a loose and free translation. And why did you pick that one? I, I think there are better examples. Uh, and even the Quran hints at the existence of E.T. Uh, I'm not going to quote the Quran, but it is there. Uh, Scientology's on board. <laughs> And it talks about some polls that were taken. Uh, and the Vatican has already covered the angles. Chief astronomer Jose Gabriel Funes publicly accepted that there could be life on other planets. Why can't we speak of a brother extraterrestrial? It would still be part of creation. A sheep, lost sheep, the humans. And we are lost sheep. We don't need to be guided by them. We need to turn to Christ. Uh, so you can see how this is going to be portrayed in the press. You're going to be labeled a conspiracy theorist if you believe in fallen angels and the biblical narrative. Harry Reid, who recently passed uh, from Nevada. Harry, whoops, get back there. Uh, this is from dailymail.co.uk. Again, these are not fringe media sources real real world media taken on this topic how senate powerhouse harry reed who was born near area 51 spent his final years pushing the pentagon to probe ufos before biden created an agency to investigate sightings days before his death at age 82 uh late longtime democratic senator henry harry reed spent much of his career in retirement pushing for government funding and investigations into UFOs. Um, I think that I've opened the door to people not being afraid to talk about it, Reed told Politico in interviews conducted in the final months of his life. In the years before his death, at Tuesday at age 82, Reed became increasingly vocal on the need for more funding for government UFO research. Next month, the Director of National Intelligence will re release a report containing all relevant government material on unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs. So we now have a new term for it, a UAP, unidentified aerial phenomena, because that's less controversial than the old term UFO or unidentified flying object. So we've upped our game. We've got a new term for it, a UAP instead of a UFO. So again, if you want to refer to this um, article, Daily Mail, .co.uk goes into more details. Those were the highlights. There's Senator Reed before his passing. And I've uh, I've heard some of his comments. Uh, there's Area 51. There's an aerial view of Area 51. The one they want us to see there. Compliments of Getty. Digital globe satellite. Um, you know. And there's there's... This is the... That's a minute of it. I think I'm, the one I've seen is more 20 or 30 minutes of it. Um, it talks about how he funded it, supported it. And then in the article, he also makes the comment that, uh, well, it's a problem because he worries about these religious types who are uh, going to need to be kind of corralled um, because of their beliefs. He thinks that the religious people will be very divisive on the issue of of ufos uaps um which takes us to um uh, you know i and i saw senator reed's comments on this show this is from the history channel unidentified inside america's ufo investigation and essentially is what's happened there's there's been a bunch of information video uh declassified by the government and it's out there for us to view it and we can see it. Um, and and this, this guy right here, Luis Elizondo, he has gone out and interviewed people who came face to face with these craft, mostly Air Force personnel. And there are two seasons of this show, uh, about eight, eight episodes 
per season. I'm hoping there's going to be an, a season three, but that, that's been slowly uh, released over the last two years. He also used to work for the government, was on the inside. Now he is a private contractor, and he is pushing to get a lot of this information released to the public with, with uh, hey, he thinks it's real. He has a very technical uh, approach in dealing with these UAPs slash UFOs and um, searching for facts, real hardcore data. Um, interesting stuff. I don't think this is a topic that's going away anytime soon. I think we're going to be confronted with more and more of it. And I think at some point we're going to have to stare it straight in the face. And then I think it's going to go back to faith. You know, there's going to be what the Bible says about it. There's going to be what the Bible says who created it in Christ. And he's in charge. He's over everything or he's not. And, you know, I'll close with, uh, Trey Smith, GodInANutshell.com. He has done many commentaries, documentaries, videos, movies on this topic. Aliens, demons, Nephilim. Uh, you can go to his nut, uh, website, GodInANutshell.com. Click on this stuff. Some of it's free. Some of it's for purchase. Um, and I've talked with Trey about this in the past. And, uh, and he did a lot of this golly, probably over a decade ago. And I told him, I said, sit tight. I think it will become very relevant. And all the work you will have done decades ago that you, you don't think that that's that big of a deal. It's about to become a big deal. And that's what this stuff will be made for. So people can go and look at what the Bible has to say about it. He goes in depth and breaks it down, much like the, the Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham's website, uh, the article I quoted earlier, just referring to the fact there are giants, uh, and there are plenty of other people out there who've done some stuff that are, that are Christians. Um, they've done all kinds, there's all kinds of work out there. That's legitimate scholarship. Do your homework, do your due diligence. There's also a lot of junk out there, but, um, I think, um, I think it's, I think it's just beginning and, um, I think it's going to be part of the deception. Of course, they're going to be posited to us as good, going to help us because we're lost sheep and we got to help all these people who believe in Jesus. They're just, they, they're, they're the problem. They're going to keep us from progressing forward. We're going to need to turn to them for answers instead of our faith. Um, you know, and, and I think Dre brings up some, some good points. This was made in 2012. Um, the UFO phenomena would just appear and disappear in thin air. Where is it when you don't see it? UFO phenomena seem to be filmed in the skies all over the world with sightings continuously. You know, this is how much things have changed in the last 10 years. Now we got stuff being leaked from the government again, mostly on Fridays after the close of business or during holidays. Um, but he was addressing this 10 years ago. Um, counters with people with these strange alien beings appeared to match closely with the counters described in the occult witchcraft and magic. Alien beings rarely were described as friendly by people who were encountered these folks or these, these beings. Um, not a not a positive experience. I've even seen some things where people call on Christ. That seems to kind of end some stuff. So, um, you know, do your homework. And, and I understand this is ridiculously controversial. I understand some of you are going to hear this and discredit me and think, well, this guy's a quack. That's fine. Um, but it's coming. I think we're just getting started. And I think as time goes along, we're going to see a little bit more and a little bit more. And it's going to be honest. And at some point, they're going to show up. And then there'll be multiples, multiple races of these things. And they'll all be telling us, hey, this one's good. We're the good ones. They're the bad ones. And 
we're going to be left to try to figure that out and they're all bad. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'll, I'll go back to where we started. Isn't that fascinating? That just needs to be reloaded over and over as I do this thing. Um, the supremacy of the sun. Don't forget this. The sun, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. All creation. For in him, all things, all of it, were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. Apostle Paul alludes to this in previous places, and they are not good little critters. They're under Satan. All things, all things were created through him and for him. He, Jesus, is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He's the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in all things he may have preeminence preeminence all things god was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through the blood of his cross the gospel message there it is the gospel message is in that message his death and resurrection right there and that's what puts him in charge of all things and with that i'll close i hope i'm wrong about this and i'm sure some of you have thought this dude has lost his marbles and he's certifiably crazy and i will tell you that you have a decision to make that this book is either true or it is not there were either fallen angels (laughs) who came to earth and did vile things with women and their offspring were giants. Uh, And I'm not the first one to say that answers in Genesis, a very conservative publication agrees with me among many others. I just took the one that I thought would be most familiar with most people. Uh, But NASA's on board. They've hired some religious experts. How will humans react to aliens? Well, We'll find out. But at any rate, I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this week in prophecy. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Here's to hoping we have a peaceful, calmer 2022. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.